For this lecture, I will talk about discrete Fourier transform, aliasing phenomenon, Nyquist sample, Nyquist rate. Well, let's talk about things of something about aliasing phenomenon, Nyquist samples, and Nyquist rate. When a function f of t, let's say you have a periodic function f of t, in real life it may represent some sort of a signal. Okay, like for example, it, it can represent the uh, the noise come from some musical instrument. It, it, for example, it is shown in the figure one. So when this function f of t in real life is sample, basically it converts the function into the function at some discrete location corresponding to time t. So for example, if you look on the horizontal axis, here you have, let's say, uh, the time t, OK, time t. Now here, let's say you have, at this location, time t is equal to t1. Here, at this location, time t is equal to t2. OK? And so on, so on, so on. At this location, time t is equal to t11. Now, according to, oh, and here, we call it, let's say, time t. In here, let's say we call it time t is equal to, let's say, t sub 16. OK? Now, to make the notation shorter, instead of calling t1, t2, t3, up to t16, we just simply say the time corresponding to the index 1, n equal to 2, n equal to 3, n equal to 4. So corresponding to n equal to 1, 2, 3, 4, we have the time equal to t1, t2, t3, t4, and so on. So let's say we have some sort of a signal like I show you on the curve in here. Let's say this represents some sort of a sound come from some musical instrument and so on. So look at the green curve, right? Now, at a certain discrete time equal to T1, T2, or T3, T4, or whatever, we can measure, let's say, the function value f of t. And let's say, corresponding to time t1, the function value is right here. Corresponding to the function t2, the function value is there. Corresponding to t3, the function value is here. t4, the function value is there, and so on, so on. The function value here is at t5. For t6, the function value is here. For t7, the function value is there. t8, the function is here. t9, t10, t11. When t equal to t12, the function value, let's say, is right there. Correspond to t13, the function is here. For t14, the function is here. t15, the function is here. t16, the function is there. Now, on this figure, which I call figure 1, I don't draw it on scale, but you should know the, the time interval between t0 and t1. We call it delta t. Also, between t1 and t2, that segment there is also delta t. So every segment, we have the same delta t, even though it, it may not look on, a, on, on scale in figure 1. So we have this delta t interval everywhere. Now the problem is this. If we sample the signal at those specific discretized time, and then you connect all the function value at those specific discrete locations, let's say by some kind of a straight line, then you can see between T1 and T2 is here, between T2 and T3, 
or you connected all those discrete function value okay the, the, and if you connect the function value corresponding to t12 t13 14 t15 t16 the function value is if you connect it by a straight line they will look like something like this now obviously that is very bad because the blue line that I show you there does not match very well with the actual signal which is supposed to be a curve like I show you with a green color it's supposed to be a curve like that okay but when you discretize it at a certain time location the function value over there if you connect it by the straight line it will look does not look resemble at all to the original function that phenomenon we call it aliasing phenomenon and that is exactly basically what I told you in the next few slides okay the function value f tutor k re represent the value of the function at the time t where t is defined as t0 plus k delta t okay and t0 is the location of the first sample and that corresponding to the index counter k is equal to zero okay and basically in figure one as you can see because we use a fairly large delta t and therefore the sequence of the discrete data that we measure does not resemble or cannot recover the original signal function as I told you earlier like I told you earlier if you connect all the discrete value of FT at a certain time location T1 T2 up to T8 for example you will see if you connect it by a piecewise linear fashion then what you get is basically like a horizontal straight line will occur between T1 and T8 and also a horizontal straight line between T9 and T12 and that does not correspond well does not resemble very well with the original function f of t like I told you and basically here we say the data has been alias in other words you need to use delta t small enough in order to be able to obtain the measure function value resemble to the original signal well there's another situation which we call it windowing phenomenon and what does that mean in this case if you look at figure 2 that I will show you pretty soon even though I show you the value delta t is pretty small okay so that way you don't have to worry about the alias problem phenomenon problem but after you connect it by the linear piecewise connection you still don't get the good answer for the entire region and the reason is because you can see from the next slide take a look at figure 2 now as you can see let's say suppose you, this is called T0 right here this is T1 this is T2 okay this is like T2 this is T3 this is like T4 and so on so on and up to here let's say call it T12 okay and the interval between any segment is always equal to delta T everything is equal to delta T delta T is the same what I'm trying to tell you is even though you use delta T equal to a small value then when you connect to all the different function value your answer may be a little bit better you know but only up to T12 your answer getting better but this region in here you don't have any discretized time value there so basically you omit this portion 
and this is called windowing phenomenon. So in other words, your discretized time value should be long enough to cover the entire region of the real signal so that we don't lose any portion of it. Now, the next thing I want to discuss with you is about the so-called Nyquist samples or Nyquist rate. Take a look at figure 3. If you look in the figure 3, on the horizontal axis, let's say I plot something about the frequency, uh, angular frequency, omega. And on the vertical axis, let's say I show you, let's say, the value of some function expressed in the frequency domain. So that means corresponding to a certain frequency, you can get, let's say, the value of the function f. So in this case in here, as you can see, you have some sort of like a, a periodic function. Because like for example, you can see you have something like this. That is a periodic function. And then after that, it will repeat itself, for example, something like this, as you can see. So here you can see you have some sort of a periodic function, okay? So now, if you look on